we know that you have been a bridge figure for so many generations of not only African Americans, but of Americans who have sought the best and the uh, most insightful thinking about issues of gender and race and culture and feminism and anti-racism and and humanity. So we're just so grateful for everything that you've done. Um, if I were to share with you just a word, I would you know say a word, for instance, gender or race, and just have you respond out of the depth and the wealth of your knowledge and experience, just so we can we can be overrunning with that Angelou wisdom. <laughs> I, I'd appreciate it. I'm pleased. So if I say, if if I say the word race, what do you say? About uh, <laughs> about ten thousand words. Uh, I see uh, the African American. I see we've come where we've come from. I love that line in the 19th century or 18th century spiritual, my soul looks back and wonder at how I made it over. It is so wonderful that it's true poetry. And um, I open my mouth to the Lord and I won't turn back, no. I will go. I shall. Now imagine this. You see, we mm. use the word slavery so lightly, but imagine that concept of chattel slavery, which meant that at the, at the moment a child, a baby is conceived, that baby did not belong to the mother, belonged to a slave owner. Now what does that do to the brain? What does that do to a person? My goodness, we lived through hundreds of years of that where a person didn't have the right to move one inch beyond what uh, a slave owner said he or she could move. And this same person said, if the Lord wants somebody, here am I, send me. It's an amazing thing to be a member of a race who's come through something, something too vile to even have been included in Alex Haley's phenomenon, The Book Roots, or in the television phenomenon roots, in which I played Kunta Kinte's grandmother. Too bizarre. And yet here we are. There's a fine musician and singer named Michael Feinstein. And uh, he was asked to compose a piece to be presented at the uh, Lincoln uh, uh, Memorial in Washington. He asked me to write a lyric. I thought of the race, the African-American race of people. And I thought of how people believed that this too shall pass away. How can you say that when you're chained around your ankle and around your neck and in your hands and branded on your forehead and on your shoulders, how can you? So I wrote, uh, We Believe. And, and uh, Michael Feinstein said it that uh, uh, I shall, this will change. And I believe that even during slavery, old black people said, This, uh, by and by, by and by, I'm going to lay down. This heavy load, amazing, amazing. It makes me wow. tremble. It makes, just to think of how people make it over. So I'm thrilled to say that I'm going to receive the Medal of Freedom. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Dyson, I keep in front of me photographs of my mother, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother, who was born a slave. And I think when I step up to receive this Medal of Freedom from an African-American president, I will receive it in the name of everybody's grandfather and great-grandfather and great-grandmother. I will also receive it 
in the name of every Italian immigrant, every Greek immigrant, every Irish immigrant who got on board some kind of rickety rackety ship and came here on a nightmare searching for a dream for everybody and I'll be I'll be surprised and grateful if I don't break down and cry mm. but I might and I'll have no apology mm. okay wow that's uh that's incredible. Uh, such a powerful, poignant uh, evocation of the spirit that courses not only through uh, black people at our best, but the kind of broad humanity that allows us to identify with other people's suffering because of our own. Yes, exactly. And that has been a hallmark and, and, and a trademark of yours. Uh, before I even talk, you know, I, I want to ask you about the word gender and feminism, but you, you, you always use your particular experience as a woman and as uh, an African-American, as a double so-called minority, but to use that as a basis to identify with so many other people who suffer in this world, which is one of the reasons why so many people of so many races and genders and sexual orientations are attracted to you, because you speak through the specific idiom of your experience, and yet you articulate a universal understanding of our human condition. Yes, exactly. You realize, you know, the Asian... Uh, the Chinese were brought here and uh, to what Miss Maxine Hong Kingston, the writer, called Gold Mountain, to build the railroads, unable legally to bring their mates for decades. And there's a phrase that used to have, a, have some currency called, you wouldn't have a Chinaman's chance. And it's because in the dangerous parts of the mining and the dangerous parts of the, and the, because of small frame of the Chinese, they were used and sometimes sacrificed to the grinding maw of greed. Now, I have to accept for every Korean, every Native American, I have to, don't you see? I'm a human being, and nothing human can be alien to me. So I'm going to accept for the white man and the black man. I can't, I will not be a party to any more polarization. I will not. I know what it's like to be a black woman. But in truth, I know what it's like to be a human being. So... Uh, I cannot have anybody minimize my life because of somebody else's ignorance and at someone else's whim. I will not. Mm. You know, and Mr. Dyson, Dr. Dyson, there's a poem written by Edna St. Vincent Millay. It's called, uh, well, the, po the title will come. It's a person who doesn't want to go to war. What do you call it? Uh, 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 anyway, but let me just tell you a few lines. Right. This thin, white, wan little woman, who, along with County Cullen, the black male poet, were the most popular poets uh, in the 20s and 30s, and she finally became the recluse she did want to become. She wrote, I shall die, but that is all I will do for death. I hear his horse's hooves on the stalls. He has business this morning, business in the Balkans, business in Cuba, but he must mount by himself. I will not give him a leg up. With his horse's hoofs on my chest, I will not tell him where the black boy lies hidden in the swamp. You see? And it goes on anyway. But it just came to my mind at that moment that this is what we have to do. We have to cease the polarization and include ourselves. If somebody draws a, a line, a circle, and it excludes you, you draw a bigger circle and include him. 